Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we are going to be reading some stories from r slash rules horror. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. I'm quite sure you've been missing this one. I have too. I'm missing a lot of subreds though. Let's start with Windows, which is apparently part of a series, but I haven't seen the rest of it. I apologize for the length, but for things to make sense, I have to tell my story in the most detailed way I can. Every night since I was very young, I've heard a light tapping on my window. Just hard enough to wake me up, but never it took much for me to wake up. I've always been a restless sleeper. Every night I would fall asleep. And around every night at 1 to 1.30, I would wake up to the tapping. Tap, tap, tap. I would wake up, slowly turn to the window, then nothing. Complete and deafening silence. I never saw anything when I looked over to the window. Just darkness. Occasionally, I would attempt to ignore the tapping. But every time I tried that... Tapping would become more frequent and louder. If I want any sleep, I had to look, so I would slowly turn, look out of my window, and the tapping would stop. Whenever I tried to talk to my mom about it, she would always chalk it up to a tree branch, tapping my window at night. The tree ne was never really close enough to my window to hit unless there was a particularly strong wind or maybe a storm. Whew. <sighs> Uh, so a tree doesn't stop when you look at it. I used to sleep over at my friend Corbin's house nearly every weekend. We hung out almost every day when we were in first grade. He was my best friend, and every day we were at each other's houses playing in the seemingly never-ending woods that surrounded our houses. Corbin only lived about a five-minute walk away from my house, so it was always very easy to see each other. The first time I slept over at Corbin's house, he said he never heard any tapping on his window, and there were no trees nearby. However, every time I slept over at his house, both he and I would hear the taps on his window. Tap, tap, tap. Both of us woke up and looked at each other, then at the windows, and the tapping would stop. We, we brought it up to Corbin's parents as well, and they both said it was just his house settling. That made sense because uh, Corbin lived in a 150-year-old farmhouse, so little creaks and taps weren't super uncommon. Come on, the house has been around for 150 years and it's still not settled? Chill out, house! The sound of something tapping on a window was very strange to me. I now know that the tapping was neither a tree, nor was it the house setting. One day, when Corbin and I were sleeping over at my house, we decided that we were going to set a camera outside and attempt to see what branch was hitting my window. We begged and begged my mom to buy us a camera. She finally gave in. She took us to Walmart and bought us the cheapest camera that could record video that we could find. We brought home and she helped us set it up and put it up in the tree facing my window. Despite our excitement, we understood that we needed to leave it be to not scare away anything that we might see. After eating our normal oatmeal of dino nuggets and baked french fries, yeah, this verse is definitely redder, drowned in an obscene amount of ketchup, we went upstairs and went to bed. We were feeling as if we were trying to catch Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. As always, later that night we heard the tapping. Unlike every other time, though, we heard a huge amount of rustling, making us worry that maybe the wind had knocked the camera out of the tree. It was particularly really windy that day. The taps that night were more aggressive than what they had been previously. They were more of a rhythmic thud against my window rather than a gentle tap. Obviously startled by the new aggressive knocks, we woke up, turned towards the window, and the knocking stopped. 
We brushed it off and went back to bed. When we woke up the next morning, we were so excited to check the footage from the camera that we skipped breakfast and didn't even brush our teeth until later in the morning. We woke up my mom and she grumbled and groaned her way downstairs, threw her shoes on her when we went outside. We went to the tree and noticed that the camera wasn't where we had set it the day before. It wasn't anywhere to be found. Instead, in its place was a piece of paper that had a hand-drawn picture on it. It was one little stick figure being hugged by a huge, shadowy being. Underneath one of these stick figures were my initials, as well as a heart underneath the big stick figure. The bottom of the e paper said, With love, my child. The paper also had a flash drive taped to the back. I gave the paper to my mother and her, her face turned to ghost white. It looked like all the blood had drained from her face. She asked me a few questions. I can't remember what they asked and really they only talked to Corbin and me for a few minutes. I, re I remember feeling guilty and scared when I saw my mother crying. There's something especially terrifying when you see your parents cry. It makes things seem much more real and serious. But still, as a five-year-old at the time, I couldn't understand the danger that presented itself that day. All these years later, I finally know what was on that flash drive. It was filled with hundreds of videos of me taken when the taps would happen in the middle of the night. Hundreds and videos of me waking up. There was one file that was a little bit different. It was from the camera we lost at night. It was a video of my window, exactly where we had rested it so many years ago. When you skim through the video, you see a hand slowly creep up over the lens of the camera. The hand was dirty, like this person had been digging holes in the ground barehanded. Oh, that's not supposed to be happening. Hang on, we'll be right back. Sorry about that. Let's get back to this story. The hand was sturdy, like this person had been digging holes in the ground barehanded. And then darkness. I can't remember much after that, or if any of the other strange events of my childhood have any connection to it. But if I remember anything else, I will update later. As of right now, it's time for me to go to bed. It's 12.57. And I don't want to miss my old friend. <sighs> this fellow does not belong here in any in any way, shape, or form. I might have said we are here for horror stories, but there is a certain structure that the post lacks that makes it not fit in our slash rules horror, and that is the rules. This should work. Rules for Alvira Hamzar, a gay community night guard. Welcome! We are delighted to have you on, bar on board with us as to the AHGC. We are a small gay community of loving people, following all the rules that you must keep in mind while performing your night shift from 9 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. Please note that these are not guidelines, but rules. Any deviation is not appreciated. Oh, the format it gets, it's kind of silly after the second rule. Anyway. One, your shift starts at 9 p.m. But please reach by 8.45, at least prepare for your shift. Two, relieve the day guard and take over the equipment. But before doing so, make sure their full face is visible to you. If they are avoiding your eyes, covering their face with glasses, a mask, or hat, or any other things, ask them to kindly remove it. Ask politely thrice. If they fail to comply, you have our permission to shoot them. You won't be prosecuted. 3. Entry to vehicles is only allowed until midnight. After that, you are free to leave the gate and make a ground of the community. 4. Make sure that every vehicle that enters, be it personal or commercial, 
It has a blue holographic sticker displaying on its windshield. Any non-compliant vehicle is prohibited. Example of the sticker is on the back of the rule sheet. Five. Sometimes at exactly 10.43 p.m., a red sedan will appear. Check the driver's hat. If it's A, red, let them pass through immediately. Their assistance is immediately needed. B, black with letters or GR and golden, let them pass all the same, but keep your eyes down. Don't stare. He will be back within a few minutes, this time with one passenger. Hope the passenger is smiling because this means their soul departed without any pain. C. Yellow. Shoot all four tires immediately. This will slow them down and give you enough time to grab the shotgun from under the desk. The shotgun is the only thing that can harm the creature. Shoot anything that comes out. Don't let them get away. D. Any other color. Ask them to switch off the car and contact head office. They will relay further instructions. Six. Make a customary note of every vehicle that passes through. Although the security camera is recording, you never know when it will malfunction. Seven. After midnight, you can leave the post. Close the gate and lock it. No vehicle will be entering. And rare occasions that someone is returning late, they will press the buzzer at the gate and talk to you via radio. Ask them the pa password. The password changes every three days, and you can find new password in community WhatsApp group. Don't open it otherwise. 8. The community only has one gate. We used to have three, but the other two are locked for now. If you ever come across gates 2 and 3 and find them unlocked, contact the head office immediately. Contact details at the bottom. 8.1 But if you find up gates broken, run and hide in the nearest house you can with the lights off. Hide and slow your breath to minimal noise. Listen carefully for the creature footsteps and follow the next instructions accordingly. If you hear a chain stangling, you can start shooting. Hope you have enough of bullets. Aim for the red orb on its chest. B. Water dripping. Find some sticks and lie on fire with your lighter provided. It fears fire. C. Heavy breathing. Shout as much as possible. Find anything that makes noise. Ring doorbells every nearby and collect as many people as possible. Poor Pete doesn't do well in crowds and noise. The worrying sounds keep hitting and call for backup. Do not confront. You can probably guess what the worrying sound is coming from. 9. Community Park is off limits after midnight. If you find someone unstrolling in the community, uh, community park after midnight, blow your whistle. A. If they run away, count your blessings. B. If they stop and become stationary, contact head office. C. If they keep walking, you can approach them with your gun drawn. Be, be prepared for any altercation. D. But if they start running towards you, run as fast as you can to the nearest house with blue gates. They are the safe houses. Hope you reach one within time. If not, your next of kin will be notified and compensated duly. And the next of kin thing kind of reminds me of Portal. I don't know why. Anyway. 10. In the rarest of rare occasions, if all the car alarms are going off simultaneously, well, there's nothing you can do. In fact, there's nothing anyone can do. It was nice being part of AHGC. I hope there is enough great red space to bury all the residents. Don't feel bad, you did your best. Close your eyes and think happy things. GR will surely have his hands full.
11. If everything went smoothly, return to the post by 4.45 a.m. By 5 a.m., milk vans and newspaper delivery starts coming. Check blue stickers and be vigilant. 12. Hand over the walkie-talkie, keys, gun, flashlight, and a whistle to the day guard by 5.30 a.m. Make note of his shoes, if they are not black and or bent backwards. Shoot his face. Await the real guard. Thank you for being with us. We hope you have a pleasant shift. Remember, be vigilant and first warn, then shoot, then approach. Cheers! And those are some rules. <sighs> Is someone outside your window? It's late at night. You're awake doing some work or just enjoying life. Suddenly you notice a humanoid figure outside your window. It's not moving, but you can tell it's looking directly at you. Follow these rules to survive. 1. Do not take your eyes off it. If you take your eyes off it for even in a moment, it will disappear and appear behind you. Blinking is fine for some reason. 2. Do not look directly look at its head. It sees it as disrespectful and will get more aggressive. 3. Do not try to get close to it. This should be obvious. You do not want to be near that thing. 4. Do not try to get away from it. It sees that as disrespectful as well. Five, keep looking at it until it disappears. You're not safe yet, so keep reading. Luckily, you're listening, so you can keep your eye on this thing. Six, call us and let us know what happened with your name and address. We'll start our preparations. Seven, it will appear again the next night, but this time we'll be there to capture it. From the UDA. Finally, we have Rampage and Destruction. You are a freshman in high school who has come back from school after having a long day of boring ass school. You got the absolute crap beat out of you by some dude named, named Zentavian Jones. And you are tired of school, so you go to the app store like usual and find more games to play. All the options look boring till you see one particular game called Rampage and Destruction. You decide to download the game out of curiosity. And once it's finished, downloading, you go into the game. The loading screen is orange and black. And after five seconds, white words pop up that say, Total Destruction. Then afterwards, it says, Before you can play, here are some words of caution. These are the rules that flash. After the last sentence. 1. There are NPCs already in the game for you to kill, and you can spawn NPCs too. But if you see any of these NPCs, don't spawn them. 1B. Void. Void is an all-black NPC with no facial features or anything. If you accidentally spawn this NPC, you have 15 seconds to kill it, or else your screen will go black and you'll be pulled into your device forever to live in a void. 1C. NPC 105. This NPC takes the form of a yellow NPC with a smiley face on it. If you spawn this NPC, usually like a void, you gotta kill it. Except in 70 seconds, you have 10 seconds. If you don't kill this NPC in 10 seconds, you will have a nightmare of a smiley face following you around. 
If it touches you, then you will die in the in the dream. And if you die in the dream, you die in real life. Is this that Sue Scientific Freddy Krueger stuff again? Bundy, William. This NPC is based on a real life person. Refer to Rule 15 for a description of William. It takes the appearance of a man with brown hair, a blue shirt that says it still hurts, black shorts, and black shoes. If you spawn on this NPC, there's no helping you. No matter what you do, you will be found with four unshot wounds to the head and one to the chest with a tattoo on your on your forehead that says, I hate myself. Two, do not use a gun called M1 Around. We didn't add that gun to the game, and players who use it supposedly will be found with a bayonet stuck in their heart. Three, if you see an NPC and one of them resembles you, then close the game and don't play it for the rest of the, of the day. Four, if a slowed version of every breath you take by the police starts, starts playing, get off whatever device you're on and go under the covers for 15 minutes. We never add music, especially not that song. Five, if the NPCs start talking, then apologize to your device 10 times, then the bug should be fixed. If it's not, then smash your device. Six, the game has fixed up dead, dead bodies on things like structures, which is normal. But if you see dead bodies of celebrities, mass killers, etc., delete the game and never download it back, unless you want to be one of the people in the pictures. The pictures people recall seeing most are pictures of uh, XXX Tentation, King Von, Stephen Paddock, and David Katz. I do not know a lot of these. Who's King Von? Who cares? 7. When it comes to melee weapons, do not use a katana. Using this weapon on any NPC will decapitate you instead of the NPC. 8. You can make maps in this game and have people play them. But if you make maps based on real life events like 9 11, the Columbia Massacre, the Boston Marathon, Sandy Hook, Waco Siege, the Way Attack, etc., we will personally come to your house and make sure the police find you with your body parts missing. Wow, that is quite the threat from a mobile game. Nine, if you see an all white NPC, don't do anything to it. Anything you do to it will be done to you. Ten, this game has a multiplayer mode, but do not turn on your mic if you do play it. Most of the multiplayer people are not human, about 95%. 11. If you see anything on a building or wall that says look behind you, don't look behind you. You'll be met with a man in all black with sharp claws who will use them to rip your heart out. 12. After playing the game, you see... If after playing the game you see black figures in the corner of your, your eyes, just ignore them. They're only real if you perceive them to be. 13. If the sky in the game turns red, do not look outside your our window oh, for 7 minutes and 43 seconds unless you want to be met with a scary smile that devours your soul. 14. If you see a man with a knife with a tall destruction shirt in front of you, act like you don't see him. If he knows you see him, that knife will be the last thing you see. 15. William is a teenage boy around 14 years old who loved things like video games and anime. He got beat up at school because of his interests. He also got no girls because he's factor or two. One day on the fateful night of December 12, 2014, four dudes came and beat him to near death with multiple objects. This led to William running home, finding a gun. Yikes. His spirit now haunts the game and its players. These are the rules for the game. Turn the freak back while you still can. The moment you click that orange button that says OK, you have already sealed your own fate for how you want to go. Wow, that went dark. Let's close that.
This was r slash rules horror. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!